Awesome. Well, we're at 11.03 right now. I think it's safe to say we should get started. Um, appreciate everybody's promptness for being on time. We're excited to have Craig here um, as a special guest from Universal Title. Craig is the owner of Assumption Solution, which can help agents complete assumptions uh, through all 50 states. So I know right now we're looking at the DMV, but you never know if you have a referral partner. Um, Craig is your guy. So I'm going to Go on mute for a second, and Craig, I'm gonna let you take it away. All right, Claire. Well, we special thanks to Universal Title for sure for having us. Um, I am Craig O'Boyle. I am the owner of Assumption Solutions, and I am joined by my head of processing, Amy Cavender. And uh, yeah, we're here to uh, teach on the assumption process. So I'm gonna share my screen. All right, exciting. So we'll challenge assumptions about assumptions. I know my cheesy jokes, you might hear a few. Uh, everybody see it, give me a thumbs up. Okay, let me make sure I am set here. Okay, so our agenda, we'll talk about the mortgage uh, assumption overview, uh, assumption loan types and eligibility, the value of a loan assumption, which is my favorite part, the assumption process steps, pricing that we charge at Assumption Solutions. We'll talk about changes that we've seen in the evolving market. And uh, my background, I'm a, I'm a realtor for almost 30 years. So I'll put my realtor hat on and I'll talk a little bit about closing more deals. Okay, so in the interest of humor, um, we'll have some fun stuff here. So uh, interest rates when bottoming out is a good thing. Oh, and one, one thing I will mention, we will try to hold uh, questions till the end. We'll have a Q&A session. So feel free to type questions that you've got into the um, comment box. And we, when we finish, we will try and go through them, but we'll also have live Q&A as well. So uh, assumptionsolutions.com likes to talk about obviously low rates and how low are interest rates on assumptions. Well, uh, bottoming, them out, bottoming out your rates are a good thing. And the lowest rate we have seen in our processing was as low as 1.75%, which just like this truck here, which I actually saw in a Home Depot parking lot and took this photo, is pretty doggone low. So we're we're a big fan of low rates at Assumption Solutions. So let's go into a mortgage loan assumption overview. Basically, a mortgage loan assumption occurs when a buyer agrees to take over the existing loan of a seller, becoming responsible for its repayment. The two types of loan assumptions are both uh, qualifying and non-qualifying. However, most non-qualifying uh, assumptions are gone. They're, they were actually something that was common in the late 1980s, early 1990s. Uh, but by the late 1980s, the government had um, sort of taken that ability away and made them all qualifying. And um, the buyer has to qualify basically to the standard that the existing homeowner who got that loan had to qualify to. All right, what type of loans are assumable and, and who's eligible? Well, basically, um, maybe not a shock to a lot of people based on the title of this, cl this class, basically all of your VA and FHA guaranteed loans are assumable. Now, let's talk about VA loans specifically. VA loans uh, are assumable by both veterans and non-veterans alike. It is a surprise to a lot of people that you do not have to be a veteran to assume a VA loan. However, if uh, an assumption occurs and goes veteran to non-veteran, the entitlement that the original borrower used to get that loan, which is something they are uh, qualified to do because they have served our nation, that entitlement will remain tied to that loan until it is paid off. Now, the veteran who sold that home, they are released from liability, um, but entitlement, it kind of works a little bit like a, a dollar value. And um, they may not have used all of their entitlement when they got that loan, 
so if they sell to a non-veteran, it doesn't mean that they cannot get another VA loan in the future. It's kind of an equation. And Amy, uh, you know, it might be a good point here for you to jump in and kind of speak a little bit about how entitlement works so our audience understands. Thank you. So entitlement, think of it as an insurance policy. So on FHA loans, um, they charge the upfront mortgage insurance premium. And what that is, is it's insurance for the lender against default. So if somebody defaults on a loan, the, the lender gets some of uh, that loss back. So on a VA loan, entitlement is basically that insurance piece. So VA will guarantee 25% of the loan amount. And so that guarantee or that entitlement or eligibility is the amount that we look at to if you've got a buyer that's doing the substitution of entitlement, we confirm up front that they've got sufficient entitlement to do so. Right. And um, is, there a, is there a good way for people to understand um, how much entitlement they have if they go veteran to non-veteran? <laughs> it's a little complicated. So uh, you would need the certificate of eligibility and then take the county limit and sub divide that by four, <laughs> subtract the amount that is tied up in that loan. And so if the remaining amount is 100,000, multiply that by four, and that's the maximum loan amount that they can qualify for that. Or just call yeah. your lender. That's usually easier. Yeah, and it's very much county specific, correct? Um, it is. I mean, the nationwide uh, county limit is 766,550, which will go up again here shortly. Um, and then there are high cost counties. So like parts of Hawaii, their county limit is a million dollars plus. Yeah. Um, and so you usually know what your county limit is. And so that's that's the amount that that entitlement is based on the the county in which they are purchasing the home. Okay. Well, I don't want to get us too deep in the weeds on that, but it is it is definitely a big question that people always ask, uh, especially agents when they're when they're marketing and considering do they need to um, um, counsel their client whether or not to even consider uh, veteran to non veteran assumption. So. Um, I'll move on here. So FHA loans obviously are assumable as well, but they don't involve um, entitlement issues like a VA loan. Uh, however, they do require that mortgage insurance is on the loan for the duration um, of that loan, no matter what the um, LTV is or how much it's been paid down. Uh, both VA and FHA loan programs are primarily for owner-occupant purchasers. However, we, we will talk a little bit uh, about some changes on some future slides here, so I'll keep going. All right, uh, my favorite slide. Um, this is where I get to nerd out on numbers. Um, we're gonna talk about the monetary value of the loan assumption. And I have uh, basically four columns here. Uh, the one I'm gonna start with here is uh, payment comparison. And I call this the headline number that gets really people excited about doing a mortgage assumption because it covers uh, the difference in the amount of money they can save on a monthly basis in their payment uh, versus getting new financing. So we'll start right off. We'll take a $400,000 loan at say 7%, which is equal to a monthly payment of 2661. And we'll compare that to a $400,000 loan at 2.75% interest, uh, which obviously isn't the lowest we've seen, but uh, is pretty common that what we have seen processed. And that gives you a monthly payment of $1,633, which equals a total monthly savings of $1,028 a month and an annual savings of $12,336. So those numbers right there just get people excited. They get people off the sidelines when they understand how much they can save a month. Because 
What I have found as a near 30 year realtor is at the end of the day, price is important, but people live every day and every month with the payment on that mortgage. So this is great information to get out uh, when we talk further down the road that you'll be sharing with clients. Uh, let's go into the next column and let's talk about uh, the purchasing power comparison. This shows uh, a lot about when rates changed in uh, 2022, how affordability became such an issue uh, with reduced purchasing power, right? So that monthly payment of $1,633 is equal to a $400,000 loan at obviously 2.75% or a $245,500 loan at a 7% interest rate, uh, decreasing the purchasing power by 154.5 to keep the same monthly payment. The purchasing power has been reduced to only 61.4% of its previous level. Now, obviously rates fluctuate. And um, at the time of this recording, the Fed made a move yesterday with hopefully a rate reducing cycle. Um, and so this is going to fluctuate, but I don't foresee that we're going to regain the greatest amount of purchasing power with rates going down to the levels that they had been prior. So this is going to be a factor, I think, for quite some time to come. All right. Now let's look at something that not a lot of people think about, but is is really huge, and that is uh, interest savings over time, right? So we're going to talk about um, basically kind of the amortization schedule and how that works out. So we'll look at uh, total interest paid on a $400,000 loan over 30 years is $558,000 and change at 7% or 187,868 at 2.75%. So the total interest savings over 30 years is over $370,000. That is massive when you talk about wealth building over time, right? Just not having to pay that out to anybody else is a big, big deal. I'm going to look at this now though, and we're going to, we're going to, pretend, I was going to use the word assume, but we're going to pretend somebody decides to sell this home uh, where they have that 2.75% $400,000 mortgage, right? And let's say they've owned it for three years. In the first three years of owning that home with that low rate mortgage, they have paid $31,938 in interest, right? That means if they sell it and a buyer assumes it and decides to keep it for the remaining term of 27 years, they will realize an interest savings of $402,106, which actually exceeds the original loan balance by that they assumed by over $2,100. I mean, that's just unbelievable when you look at the amount of savings over time. It kind of makes me think back to being in, in brokering in the super hot times of 21, uh, 2020 and 2021 when people were overbidding. I, I sit here and say, well, it was total wor totally worth overbidding if you're going to keep that home for a long time and realize the savings with that low interest rate. So um, that's a big deal. Um, okay, now the last column I want to talk about here, uh, I never thought about when we started this company. I just, it didn't click with me until we had a deal come across our desks and it was an older loan carrying a higher interest rate. And this was shocking to me and it made me really reevaluate re re what I thought was the uh, only market for assumables, which was loans that were originated between March of 2020 and March of 2022, when basically they were below three and a half percent. But we had a loan come across where it was a $500,000 loan originated at 5.29% in 2009 and had a payment of $27.73. That owner had that loan uh, for 15 years and they had paid it down. The principal had been reduced uh, by uh, to 2023 to 358,759. That's what they had that could be assumed by the buyer, right? The home was put on the market at uh, a sale price of 900,000. And that left what we call an assumption gap, meaning the difference between the price of the home and the loan that could be assumed 
of 541 uh, and change. Uh, the buyer of that home uh, had sold a home in Hawaii, had that big gap in cash and wanted to assume the loan. The seller of that home in the first 15 years had paid the bulk of the interest because in an amortization schedule, interest is front end loaded. So they had paid uh, $336,000 and change in interest already. That meant when the buyer took over this loan, the remaining interest over the next 15 years before the loan was paid off was only $164,000. Massive, massive savings not necessarily the lowest interest rate out there, of course. I mean, historically speaking, 5.29% is still pretty darn good, doggone good, but they're just reaping the benefit of doing the assumption and saving tons of interest over the next 15 years. So that's a big deal. Um, these numbers, I think, are crucial for agents to understand and crucial for agents to be able to communicate with potential clients, be they buyers and sellers, when talking about this market. We're happy to share these out anytime. So I will um, give that caveat here. All right, we'll get out of the, 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 the numbers piece and we'll talk about um, the assumption process steps and, and how things go and uh, what we take to get um, people through the process of an assumption. Right. So from whether you're representing a buyer or whether you're representing a seller, um, this is applicable. The first thing, obviously, is confirming that the property has an assumable FHA or VA loan. When you meet with a seller, when you get information on, on the property, the information you want to gather, you want to take special note of the uh, loan balance, the payment, PITI payment, the interest rate and the remaining term on that loan. Uh, you want to find out is, does the loan documents have a VA FHA case number or VA FHA on there? You can often pull an O&E report and um, get a copy of the deed of trust that will show that case number for either FHA or VA on the loan. If it's FHA or VA, it is assumable. All right. From there, uh, you're either marketing the property or you're helping buyer hunt and you locate a property. And then your next step is obviously execute an assumable purchase contract. In your contract, you need to be, even before you go under contract, you need to be planning for the timeline of an assumption. Um, they can take, based on our experience, anywhere between 45 to 120 plus days. We are starting to see the average somewhere between 60 and 90, and I would say that might even be starting to come down a little bit. Some deals are as fast as 45. I think we've even seen a few uh, quicker than that lately uh, to 60 days. Um, but you can also call us, and once you know who the servicer is, we track their, their timelines over time because we do a lot of these across the nation. And we can usually give you an idea of what we're seeing in their trend with closings, right? But it is very, very important that all parties understand that it doesn't move exactly like contracts do in a new loan situation. The servicers are going to work at their pace based on their workload level, uh, skill level in this area, staff, all kinds of factors come into play here. Now, a lot of people are aware that, that there is guidance by the government entities about how fast these are supposed to go. But quite frankly, um, they're not enforcing with teeth a lot of those guidelines at this point. So people need to be flexible in understanding the timeline. The next thing that you need to plan for in this process is buyers need a plan for the gap between the purchase price and the loan amount, which is usually a cash down payment. However, I am going to address a few things that we are seeing come up here in a slide coming up. Um, flexibility and advanced planning are essential as the process may take time. So just from a real estate agent's perspective, if you're you're working with a seller, you're working with a buyer, and you've got somebody 
who says, I absolutely need the cash and I need to be moved out of this house in 30 days, it may be difficult to go the assumption route. But if you have somebody who's like, I am flexible, you know, I I just want the home to go and, and get on with my life or, you know, I, I don't have to be in the house at this specific time. An assumption is a good process for this with the amount of uh, savings there that, that can be there for the buyer. And potentially when you're marketing these, um, increased value for the seller. So we'll talk further about that too. All right, um, now you've got an agreement. Uh, a lot of agents are like, what do I do next? I've never done this. How do I get through this process? Well, we encourage you to send the contract to Assumption Solutions, right? We can help you here. Send us your contract and contact deals for all parties in involved. We're going to do an engagement with the buyer and the seller, right? And the first step of what we're going to do is we're going to vet your transaction in a matter of days to determine the chances of service or approval rather than you waiting weeks or potentially months for the servicer to review, right? They, when they get your file, you're in a queue, right? And they sort of are gonna get to it when they get to it. I know representing sellers, we don't want a lot of off-market time if a deal isn't gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we are going to look at that with the same lens that the servicer is gonna do. Amy here, my head of processing and my other processors, Amy is a 30-year lender. She's my go-to lender in my real estate company. And she's probably processed more assumptions than anybody in the United States. So she's going to jump in and, and make sure that this deal is viable, right? Um, next, once we get through that hurdle, we're going to help submit the assumption to the servicer, ensuring that it's done right the first time. You know, a lot of people trying to figure this out and don't know what they're doing, if they make a mistake... Uh, the servicer, ultimately, when they do get to review it, they're going to kick that thing out and you're going to have to resubmit. And then you go back potentially to the back of the line, lengthening your timeline, which is already longer than a new loan. So we're helping keep you out of the bad situations and helping you do things right the first time. Now, every servicer has got different processes and different steps. I mean, we had some funny things when we started this company that we never thought we'd have to deal with because their systems uh, I mean, we we had to get a fax line, believe it or not, that we exceeded our amount of faxes with the company when we got it because uh, they thought nobody sends this much faxes anymore. But yeah, they all have different systems, but they're all getting better too. So that's a good thing that we're seeing. Now, ultimately, servicer issues assumption approval. We do not approve whether or not the servicer will do the deal, the servicer makes the final determination, right? Uh, Assumption Solutions vets the file and assists with submission, uh, reducing the risk of staying in a contract unlikely to succeed or submitting an incomplete and incorrect package. The servicer is the final approval authority. Once they grant assumption approval and clear to close, closing can be scheduled. So um, every contract in the nation is different. Um, what we encourage in, in contracts is that one of your last deadlines prior to closing is something called a loan transfer approval deadline. When I coach agents around the nation about contracts, I always say, you know, gosh, if you don't know who the servicer is and you're writing that offer, you know, give yourself at least 60 days, right? And But have that conversation with the other side. What happens if it's not done in 60 days? Are people ready to extend or be further out there because flexibility is obviously key. Now, I will talk to one thing we are seeing pretty common. You know, once we've vetted the file and it's been submitted correctly, and then things like inspections are done or um, title work is done and, and those things, we are seeing a lot of clients and a lot of buyers and sellers come to agreements where the buyers are doing rent to closes. Because at the end of the day, a lot of this is just a matter of getting through the processing department at the servicer. But obviously, that's that's guidance you have to give your clients on, on whether that makes sense or not. So um, once again, timelines may vary. So remain flexible in this process. That is very, very key. All right. Navigating a complex process with experts. Dream work makes the team work. Obviously, many of you have had clients that um, chose not to work with you or go through the real estate process not to work with you. Well, I'm going to show you a little graphic of three clients who chose not to work with you and chose not to work with us, right? Our goal here is to laugh. 
So you got three clients here who did not have the best days going through the real real estate process, but you had one in the right hand corner who ended with a smile. Our goal is to help you and be on your team to help those clients be down here. We don't want our uh, other clients ending up like these other three. So, all right, there's my bad joke. All right, let's talk about pricing for what we do. All right, Assumption Solutions charges each party a $750 fee, totaling $1,500 per transaction. Now, we what we do is the first $50 per side that we charge happens at engagement to get us going. That's a non-refundable fee. Uh, but we do not charge the remaining 700 per side unless the servicer issues approval and clear to close. So we like to say we are low cost, low risk, high value. That is our uh, motto for what we're doing here. So seller success fee 750, buyer success fee 750. Now servicer fees uh, for processing these, they're often under $1,000. Uh, government entity fees uh, on the VA side, the, they can charge a buyer funding fee of a half a percent, which is waived if uh, the buyer uh, has a qualifying VA disability, and then they don't have that at all. Uh, FHA obviously doesn't have that um, uh, deal because their mortgage insurance is part of the loan for the life of the loan. Now, in most cases, completing a mortgage assumption costs much less than that of securing new financing. I'm gonna give some examples on the pricing too here because we get this question a lot, right? So a buyer and seller are splitting the fee, right? So seller, seller success fee 750, but buyer success fee of 750, upfront engagement is $50 each, assumption approval and clear to close is issued, the remaining 700 per side is in, invoiced. All fees, though, are billed outside of closing. We invoice directly to the clients via Square. Uh, we found that invoicing at closing created some problems with servicers that actually was delaying closings because there was some confusion. So we uh, moved to a system where we just don't bill part of the closing, right? So that is key to understand. We often get scenarios that where one party is paying the fee right? Buyer, seller, or a third party. Um, and that can be done. You just have to let us know how you want it done. So in that case, obviously the 750 per side is $1,500 to one party. The upfront engagement would be $150 per side to whichever party is paying that. And then once the assumption is approved and clear to close is issued, we invoice out the remaining $1,400 outside of closing. All right. So that's what we charge, which we think is extremely fair. In either scenario, if assumption approval is not achieved, the only fee collected is the $50 engagement fee per side. Once again, low cost, low risk, high value. All right, um, Amy, you probably want to unmute here because we're both going to be tackling this one. These are some uh, changes we have seen over time in this market. When we started this, uh, I like to say we kind of invented the space that we're in. We had to do a lot of training in the in the, which we still do obviously in the agent market in the public market but even we had to do a lot of training in the servicer market and um it's been an interesting ride we we are continuing to see changes and things happen as we get deeper and deeper into this so one of the first things we saw and that i want to address now is the possibility to occupancy requirements it was a universal um, no to investors doing these when we first started in early 2022. And then we started having some servicers start to say, hey, we'll consider um, non-owner occupants. So a Amy, why don't I let you touch on these guidelines a little bit better? So why don't you take this one? Okay, so um, VA, what we're seeing is that the servicers will allow non-owner occupied, so investment properties, if the entitlement is staying with the property, okay? FHA is owner occupied only, regardless of, I, I mean, there's no substitution of entitlement, but regardless of anything else, FHA is owner occupied only. Um, but back to the VA with the substitution of entitlement, there are quite a few, uh, and most agents, their their initial reaction is, 
well, I'm not letting my seller uh, walk away without their entitlement. That's just dumb. And, you know, there's a huge risk there. We've got plenty of situations where maybe both um, sellers are veterans. And so they've got dual entitlement in their household. Um, we've got, you know, a couple where this was their last house that they're ever going to buy. They've already bought their other house that they're going to live in forever. And they don't really need their entitlement. Um, some of it is just, this is the only way that they can get this household sold. They PCS to Germany and they've got to get it gone and they don't care if that entitlement is tied up. So, um, occupancy, we are seeing that non-owner or yeah, non-owner occupied is allowed as long as that entitlement stays with the house. Right. Right. Yeah. And that, and that brings up a good point. You know, um, I, from an agent perspective, I think it's key that we don't put our own opinions on what is right for a seller, whether to go to um, a non-VA substitution buyer or not. I mean, sometimes you you just have to make the best decision for you. And we, uh, what would you say? I mean, you know, three out of every 10 deals we see go uh, veteran to non-veteran. I think it, without tracking it, I think that sounds about right. Um, you know, and again, a lot of times you just have to talk them through. There are a couple of risks with leaving the entitlement tied to that loan. Um, you know, if that loan is at 2% and you're only on year, you know, two, there's a chance that that loan could be out there for another 28 years. And so that portion of the entitlement may never in your lifetime be reinstated and you have to, the seller has to be okay with that. The other risk is that if the seller or if the buyer defaults on that loan, that portion of their entitlement that was used to um, insure that loan, that portion is gone. Um, and so, because it's been paid as the insurance to the, to the servicer. So, um, yeah, but it, again, it's not for us to decide. It's to, we lay that out for the sellers and go from there. Yep, exactly. All right, so let's keep moving here. Uh, the potential for obtaining secondary financing. So I would say this is the number one question that people ask about. Can the gap between the price and the loan be financed? When we started, once again, we were getting pretty much universal no's, right? And we we even had some that were run up the flagpole and and, and you know, a lot of varying responses even from the the government administrations about whether they'd allow that or not. Right. And then lenders started really wanting to try to figure this out and, and get into this space. And true or not. Um, at one point, as this started to get going, um, word started to spread that on the VA side, if they were going to do a second, the VA wanted that second to be assumable, which second assumable seconds basically didn't exist, right? Not a product in the marketplace. About, I'm going to say, what, three, four weeks ago now, the VA basically came out and issued guidance that said they, they don't have a problem with secondary financing as long as it doesn't affect the position of the first mortgage and that they don't have a requirement with regards to assumability. So while we're not seeing this in what we're processing at a mass level yet, we do expect this to grow quite a bit because there is demand in the marketplace for it and where there's demand, entrepreneurial um, organizations are going to find a place to fill it. And so I think we are correct processing a few right now that are going that route, but we're not seeing it at scale yet, but I expect that to change. But things to think about with regards to secondary financing. Number one, um, you're probably going to have a cumulative loan to value limit, meaning the combination of the two, two loans um, probably at least where you're going to have to have 10% uh, equity into the property, right? So for example, a $400,000 loan can be assumed on a $500,000 sale. 
Well, 10% equity would be $50,000 that somebody would still need to be bringing to the deal, giving them the ability to finance an, a, a second for about 50,000, right? Um, the other thing to consider is second mortgage rates are going to be pretty high compared to the first, um, probably north of 9%, I would say. Um, just guesstimating here, Amy, you might know more, but um, then the person is going to qualify with the blended rate, right? So they're going to have to make sure that the two rates still make the deal work in, as far as qualification ratios and things of that nature. Um, now, how are people filling the gap without seconds? I mean, we see all kinds of things. We see gifts. Um, we see people borrowing money from themselves, taking money out of their 401k. We see people sometimes doing mortgages on other properties they own uh, to fill it. And, and there's lots of methods that people are doing it, but there's a lot of people in the market who simply either they've sold something or they've just got a lot of savings and they're, they're buying these. The, the people doing these deals that we see are very financially savvy. They're the kind of clients you really want in your database from my perspective as a realtor because they have the resources to buy real estate and they are going after these. They recognize the savings. So, But we expect to see this grow quite a bit and we're very optimistic with that here. Uh, all right, we'll keep moving here. Um, we instituted a, uh, a thing that was basically uh, market need from our perspective, and we call it the buyer pre-verification process. So normally when we were getting involved in deals, it was when a contract was put together. But we've had a lot of people say, hey, I've got a, a client. How do I determine what they can do in the assumption mar market as a buyer? Obviously, you know, most of us have lender connections around the country. We can send them there. But if somebody's doing an assumption, there's not often a role for a new mortgage lender. And so it's not a place that they're excited to be. So we said, OK, well, we'll do a buyer pre-verification. Basically, what we'll do is the same thing we would do when a contract came in. We'll, we'll charge an engagement fee, our $50 engagement fee to the buyer. We'll look at everything we would look at from the buyer side financially. And we'll be able to say, okay, you could do an assumption at this price point and the, with these details around it. Then if they go out and find a property, we do not recharge the engagement fee. They've paid it. It's paid. You pay it one time and, and that's it. Uh, and that enables you to kind of get clients out in the marketplace. Um, we don't use the word pre-qualification because we don't offer financing in this company. So we use a pre-verification process. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully it's fulfilling for a market need here. Uh, Amy, I'm going to let you jump in on, on this one for sure. Um, we'll talk about the handling of escrow accounts. This was something we didn't anticipate either. Um, so Amy, why don't you talk about this one? Okay, and Shannon's on the call too, so she can pipe in too if she's got something uh, to add to it as well. Um, escrow accounts are proving to be a little challenging. Um, main reason is escrow accounts are unique for each uh, loan. And so some escrow accounts have a negative balance. Some have excess because maybe their insurance policy of $5,000 is about to be paid. Um, taxes are paid at different times and different ways all over the country. Um, I just had one the other day where the seller's escrow account was, I think it was like $6,000. And I asked why it was so high. Um, the insurance does not transfer to the new buyer. So if it was high because the insurance is about to pay out, we need to make sure that that seller gets that money back for that insurance. Um, and it, it happened to be that the taxes were due and payable, I think it was October 1st. And those taxes were for the fourth quarter of 2024. Okay. So in Colorado, our taxes are paid in arrears. They're paid in February and June. And so, you know, right around those times, people have excess in their escrow account. Um, the best thing is to have the conversation with your client. So number one, find out from the seller when, uh, what their escrow balance is. 
And then you can go from there and we can kind of help talk you through what makes sense. My concern is because a lot of these servicers are just reimbursing the sellers for the escrow account, that the buyers next year are going to have shortages because we don't have money in the escrow account to pay things such as taxes. So again, it, it kind of depends on your county. Um, the biggest thing, obviously, is we want to make sure that there's sufficient funds in the escrow account so that when taxes are due and payable, there's sufficient funds in there to pay it. Um, insurance is paid up front at closing or some of them are requiring that to be paid before closing. And then some of them are, are uh, collecting that cushion for insurance. Some of them are not. So it's just one of those things we need to have the conversation about what will be happening with the escrow account. Will it be transferring to the buyer, which I believe is the best way to do it? And then is the buyer going to reimburse the seller for what is in that escrow account? So. Excellent. Um. Okay. No one size fits all on that one. Okay. Uh, the next one I'm going to talk about, uh, VA eligibility restoration timeline. Many of us are familiar with helping a client sell a home who's going to get a new VA loan and buy a home. And that in a traditional sense can be done in the same day. You can close, you can go down the hall, you can close the next one. In an assumption, there is a uh, something that we are hoping changes because it needs to be cleaned up. And this is probably going to require the government entities to get involved, right? Right now, the guideline is if you do a sale and the buyer, it goes VA to VA and substitution is done, meaning the uh, seller's going to be, their eligibility is going to release, the new buyer, their eligibility is going to go on this loan. The servicer has up to 45 days basically to inform the VA that a substitution has taken place and the VA has another 30 days in which to reinstate that. So that is potentially 75 days uh, from sale to being able to become a new VA loan buyer. So that is quite frankly ridiculous. That needs reform, that needs change. If it can be done on a new loan, there should be systems in place where it can be done in an assumption. And I know that the Veterans Administration does not want to handicap veterans in terms of their ability to compete in the marketplace when they're buying a home. So we're hopeful that this will change, but this is something that needs to be talked about, needs to be thought, and needs to be dealt with. So when you're working with a seller who then wants to become a buyer, and let's say they want to do two assumptions, you know, the buyer wants to assume, it may be a challenge for them to go from closing on their home to closing on the next one without some kind of period of waiting, right? Um, so yeah, that's an issue there. Is there anything you want to chime into on this one, Amy? No? Okay. All right. Well, then we'll keep going. If questions come up, we'll address them there. All right. So uh, closing more deals. Um, you know, as realtors, they said this would be an easy job, right? Well, being a real estate agent is the least stressful career that Jessica, 29-year-old, has ever had. She sure looks it, right? And then you go to the doctor. What's your occupation? Well, I sell real estate. And the doctor asks, do you drink? Yes, I sell real estate. This industry can drive you to that, right? We've all been there. All right, more corny jokes are done. All right, now I'm going to put the real estate agent hat on here. And we're going to talk about uh, marketing potential sellers with assumable mortgages, targeting buyers that could benefit from assuming lower rate loan. And then I'll talk about effectively promoting listings with assumable mortgages. And then we're going to talk about um, some of the um, resources and partners out there. And we actually have a special treat that I'll get to in a little bit here uh, with somebody that's on the call that doesn't normally uh, join our presentation. So let's jump right in. Uh, market to potential sellers with assumable mortgages to secure more listings, right? Um, reach out to past clients or your network with assumable loans. I think that's always the first place to go for any business in my perspective, but um, you want to highlight the value of an assumable mortgage that they have in a rising interest rate market. They have a unique asset, 
right? They have something that they need to be told uh, could make their home either sell faster than other homes or potentially for more money, right? There's no guarantee there. Everything's negotiable, but it is like uh, almost just another thing that their competition in the market, they may not have when they are marketing the home, right? Use social media to educate homeowners on assumable mortgages. Um, you're welcome to link our contact to, content to your pages. You know, that um, number breakdown, that monetary stuff, I'll share it with anybody who wants us. You just have to reach out to us. But it's really simple to do on your own, too. I mean, any Google mortgage calculator on the Internet can get, give you that kind of info. But you want to you want to get that information out there on all the platforms that you use to market yourself, your company and your business. Um, Create educational videos for those places as well as post to explain the assumable mortgage process to the public. Uh, you want to showcase your expertise in this field. People always want to go with the uh, person who has the greatest expertise that they feel will take care of them. Get that information out there. Uh, you can utilize farming tools to identify properties with assumable loans originated or refinanced in the last few years. Um, title companies can help you with this for sure. When we were starting this business in 2022, uh, which we're, I don't know if I said this, we were based in Colorado Springs, which is home to a big army base, the United States Air Force Academy, um, some Space Force bases, VA's big thing in our marketplace. And I went to my title company and I said, okay, how many loans in our marketplace were financed between March of 2020 and March of 2022? One county, we had 14,000 loans in our marketplace that carried a loan, a carried a rate below three and a half percent. So it isn't small. Anywhere in the nation, obviously, uh, I think VA and FHA combined make up on average about 30 to 35 percent of the marketplace. So a lot of farming can be done to get uh, potential sellers. Uh, and notifying that they have something special that you know about, you can market and you can help them do. And then um, one of our partners also has pretty neat something we'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, teach classes to homeowners about the value of their assumable loan in the rising rate market. Uh, I've had the privilege of actually attending some agents in our markets classes. They wanted me there just for questions or reviewing their material. Um, and they've done really well with it. There are agents who are specifically hardcore targeting this market and getting a lot of deals and a lot of clients with this uh, with this stuff. Um, you're welcome to incorporate off of our website a listing presentation flyer that we have made. It's just a quick little something that just talks about the fact that these people have an asset. So, uh, and you're also kind of telling them you have a backup team that knows how to get these done too, which we think is helpful. All right, target, target buyers who could benefit from assuming a lower rate loan. A lot of similarities here. Reach out to past clients in your network, uh, especially ones who are payment sensitive. I had clients when rates changed who basically backed out of the market that I was able to resurrect by showing them the amount of money they could save by assuming versus getting a new loan. And they were resurrected. Um, I've got one of them on the market right now, currently. So you can get people uh, very much interested when you get them this information. Same thing, use social media to educate buyers about these savings that can be realized by assuming a loan. Um, I thought the public would know more than they did, but there is a lot of ignorance about the fact that loans can be assumed and the, the savings that can be realized. So get that information out there. Collaborate with listing agents to promote listings. Showcase the mortgage and payment de details to highlight the benefits of lower rate assumable loans. A uh, few weeks ago, I ran a test. I just found some listings in the marketplace off of my, my website for my real estate company, O'Boyle Real Estate. I went in there and I posted those listings from my website to my social media. And, but I put in the blurb, this home can be bought with a payment of you know, X, with an interest rate of X, and, and all of that kind of stuff, because um, that is the asset that people would buy. In three hours, my website had 100 unique clicks. 
So I know as a listing agent, if you want to promote a listing that I have got for sale, however you want to do it, I am behind it. You can just reach out to me. We'll collaborate. My goal is to get my seller's property sold. So collaborate with them. Um, get that info out, info out there and generate some leads. Um, engage with the veteran community. Explain how assuming a VA loan and swapping entitlement with another veteran benefits both parties who have served our nation. You know, if you've got a veteran community um, in high in your market, there are organizations specifically dedicated to them. And truthfully, the most attractive assumable buyer in a VA mortgage is veteran to veteran who has entitlement to swap. So get out there, get with those people. Host buyer classes about the value. Um, same kind of thing there. Um, share our content. Um, we're happy to co-teach with you if you need help. We're here as a resource. All right. Now, obviously you get a listing. It's key that you effectively promote the listings with assumable mortgages, right? There is confusion sometimes that I see where people do not think that they can put info out there about the interest rate or about the mortgage and stuff like that. This is different from promoting interest rate on a new mortgage because it's not subject to their qualification or their, their credit score or anything like that, right? This is a fixed thing, a fixed asset that they are buying. So when you use the MLS, you want to put um, anything you can in the MLS in dedicated fields uh, about the, uh, the loan amount, the payment, the interest rate, all of that stuff. That is not something to hide from the public or your agent colleagues. You want to get that information out there as much as possible because that is what they are buying, right? So yeah, include the monthly payment in, if you can in any syndicated public sites. Uh, it's funny here in Colorado Springs, um, we have fields for this, but public remarks, we can't put that stuff in. But a lot of those public sites, you can go in and edit that information and put that stuff in public remarks that clients can see really differentiate your property when you do that. I mean, if you don't get that information out there, it's like you have a listing where they totally remodeled the kitchen, but you took no pictures of it and you do nothing in the description about it. You want to get that information out there. Uh, use social media, showcase the listing, emphasize this stuff, compare and contrast this home and the savings versus other higher rate potential loans out there right? That's a big deal to get out there. There are a lot of groups that have popped up in this space too, that are worth joining and worth looking into that specifically buyers are joining, agents are in. Um, there's a lot of um, social media that can be done out there. Highlight the assumed mortgage and payment savings on flyers, at open houses, um, sign writers, boxes, whatever kind of marketing you use. You want to shout this from the rooftop. This is special. You have it. Um, and then I think it's very helpful um, to show buyers and other agents that you have a team member. That's what we are. Just like your inspector or your lender or your title company here at Universal Title, right? You have a team member to help you through the process. Most agents are a little scared of how this is going to go because they don't have experience in it. They've never done it. Well, you have somebody in us that you can rely on and you can tell them, hey, look, we're going to use this company. They're going to make this um, as simple as possible for all of us. All right. Now we're going to move into um, partnering with experts to ensure a smoother transaction process. This has been a very interesting journey for me. We have come across a lot of unique things out in this space um, that um, have really blossomed in areas that we don't focus on in our company. We're obviously focused on getting the transaction closed, but there are some websites out there. Um, I'm going to focus a little more on the middle one here, but um, some of these other websites are designed, their, their model is designed to basically um, send business to agents around the country, send the clients who are looking for these. So I, I would say they're worth a check out, but I'm going to talk specifically right now about um, assumelist.com um, because we have the uh, owner of assumelist.com, Mike Lorino, on here, who is also a Virginia realtor. And I have been using his platform myself, both for marketing or for helping existing clients. And Mike, uh, do, are, do I need to unmute you or are you? Can you? Yeah, you're there you go. 
why don't you talk a little bit about your platform? Because I think it is awesome and it's a great tool for real estate agents across the nation. Yeah, thanks, Craig. I appreciate it. Um, great job today. Great class. Um, thank you, Amy, for for jumping in as well. Um, listen, there's a, there's a whole lot of com lot of context and knowledge that was passed today, and I was, it took you know guys like myself and Craig to learn this over a period of years, and so. Um, I like to make myself available specifically to agents to support agents and helping agents grow their business. In fact, I've got a webinar in one hour with Lab Code Agents. I'm one of the national partners with Lab Code Agents. We're doing a nationwide webinar with them. Um, if anybody's interested, I'm happy to share the link. Um, so, yeah, I started a student list about two years ago for the sole purpose of helping agents uh, find homes with assumable mortgages. As we all know, it's not always uh, um, advertised in the listing. In fact, I've done some uh, some studies, only about 10 to 15% of properties with an assumable mortgage are advertised in the listing by the listing agent as having an assumable mortgage. And I find about half, at least in, uh, in most markets around the country, half of all listing agents who list a property um, even know that the home that they're listing has an assumable mortgage. I oftentimes call listing agents for my own clients asking them, hey, I see your home has a VA uh, mortgage with a 2.75% interest rate. Is your seller open to receiving an offer to assume that mortgage? And I'll immediately get the response, oh, no, 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 my this, this, this home doesn't have an assumable mortgage. And I have to ask them the question like, well, did they refinance out of their VA loan? And they'll say, no, no, it's still VA. And I'm like, okay, so it is assumable. And then there's like a 15 second pause. They're like, oh, you mean all homes with assume with VA loans are assumable? I'm like, yes, like, like, yes. I thought you're the expert. You're the one listing the home. So usually with assumable mortgages, there's a lot of, there's a bit of a learning curve. And so the reason why I bring that up is because as Craig pointed out, I think I'm, I'm convinced of this. One of the easiest ways to grow your business as a real estate agent in this market is to become an assumable expert. There are, there's very, very few uh, agents out there with this expertise and those that can really learn how they work really can stay, set themselves apart uh, from the competition, from other agents who really have no knowledge about this. And so I've, I'm having my, my team personally, we're having a record year in production uh, this year for 2024. We've exceeded our 2023 metrics. In fact, we've already exceeded, it's now sub middle of September, we've already exceeded our 2024 annual goal for the year um, and we have three, you know, three months left of the year because uh, we've marketed ourselves as an assumable mortgage expert. There is no shortage of buyers out there that want to buy a home with a two and a half percent interest rate. If you can help them do that, you will see buyers start flocking to you. I have sold more listings this year because I was an assumable mortgage expert. Case in point, almost every seller will become a buyer in most cases and they won't sell unless they can find a home that has an interest rate commensurate with the interest rate in which they're selling. But sellers typically don't want to sell their home with a 2.75 to go take out a new mortgage at six and a half. And so I can solve that problem for them. And about half of my assumption deals this year have been a double-sided transaction. So anyway, I wanted to spend, uh, Craig, if you can uh, give me about five minutes maybe less. Um, sharing is disabled though, if you don't mind sharing uh, permissions. I want to do a quick, just quick, quick demo on a Zoomless, the search platform. It is the only search platform specifically geared for B2B. All the other uh, search platforms to help assume mortgages are B2C. They're specifically used for consumers to help consumers find uh, assume mortgages. The difference is um, a Zoomless is specifically designed to help agents. Um, and I really wanted to focus on that. So let me just go ahead and share my screen real quick. Um, hopefully, uh, yeah, you can see my screen now. So sumos.com. Um, and um, I'll just quickly just, you know, you're welcome to go to this website and just check out our content. We have a little bit of a little short video on our, on our homepage. We are actually updating this tomorrow uh, with an entirely new user interface. We're, we're revamping it and uh, modernizing it and specifically the search platform, which I'll show you in a second. Um, there is a cost tied to this because there, I mean, there's a lot of really cool proprietary tools as patent pending software. Um, we do allow consumers to subscribe, but the, the core component of this is agents. And we really wanted to provide agents with tools to grow their business. And so not only can you search actively listed homes, 
You can also search for off-market properties, and I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, where do we cover? Uh, we're in 18 states right now, so we're one of the – and every state and every market which we cover, we have an active MLS feed. So we directly tie into the MLS. So when a property with an assumable mortgage comes up for sale, we know about it, and we list it, we advertise it on our website. It's immediate. I have tons and tons of people around the country – Contact me and say, hey, Mike, I've got a VA loan. I, I just went on the market. Uh, how do I get it added to a SUM list? I was like, no, no, no. If it's already on the market, it's already on a SUM list. And even if the listing agent doesn't even know or doesn't check any boxes or doesn't include any comments, it doesn't matter. If it has a VA or FHA mortgage or USDA mortgage, it will be listed on a SUM list in, in the market in which we cover. So if you if you wanted to go to the area serve page, um, you're welcome to check out the locations in which we cover. We just launched in Texas Last month, it's the largest um, state in the country with assumable mortgages, followed by California and Florida. We're in those three big states, uh, as well as Colorado, in uh, a central portion of Colorado to include Denver and Colorado Springs, Northern Virginia, the entire state of Maryland, D.C., you get the point. Let's talk specifically about the platform itself. I just want to do a quick demo. Um, so first off, actually, before I show you the search platform, one of the really cool tools inside of it is you get to see in specific to your market, um, what the assumable mortgage industry looks like right now. So on our website right now, we have twenty, almost 28,000 properties in active status um, for sale today. Every single property on the website has an interest rate of below 5%. The vast majority have an interest rate of below 3%. So, you know, I always hear listing agents or, or buyers or other agents complain, well, you know, assumable mortgage is not a real thing. You know, there's really never anything for sale or no, you know, it's impossible to really get them to close and false, 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 false. I mean, just in in, you know, Colorado, there's uh, over 1600 properties in active status in just a few counties that we cover. It's not even statewide in Virginia, my home market. There's over 1100 in the northern Virginia market. The other cool piece of data that you see is we're the only place in the country that tracks trend data for assumable properties. So just in Colorado, since, since uh, you know, Craig is hosting this, um, the inventory for assumable markets, and this is active status, has increased week over week, really since the spring. So you can see just, you know, as of last week or this week, even uh, yesterday, there was over 1,600 properties for sale in active status relative to, you know, about half that um, just a few months ago. So inventory for assumable mortgage um, mortgages has improved significantly over over the last few weeks. And that's the same case across the country nationwide. Um, and then really quickly, let's just talk about um, uh, the platform itself. So this is what's getting all revamped uh, this weekend. Uh, but let me just do like Fairfax County, Virginia, which is my home market. We can certainly type in any any location. You can search by city. You can search by county. You can search by zip code. You can search by neighborhood. So if there's an HOA, this just pulled up every HOA with the word Fairfax. So you can see all the different cities and states that it applies to. You can even just type in the MLS ID number and you can search for a specific property. You can search by a specific address. So this is showing every single address with an assumable home with the word Fairfax in it. For the purposes of this, let's just go Fairfax County, Virginia. And right now we can see there's 175 properties with an assumable mortgage in Fairfax County. Uh, on our platform. Um, I typically like to filter it based on active. And since our MLS includes coming soon, I typically check coming soon. And within a few seconds, you can see, just type in Fairfax County, or you can type in a zip code or a specific community or location, and you can start setting your search parameters. Um, you can filter based on FHA or VA homes, depending on what clientele you're supporting. So if you've got an investor who's looking to buy a second home or an investment property, you have definitely want to select the VA because we already discussed earlier in this class that FHA assumptions do require to be owner-occupied, but that's not the case with VA when the seller is leaving their entitlement. The other really cool feature is you can also filter based on down payment. So if you've got a buyer who only has X amount of down payment, you can set those filters and it will only show you those properties based on that down payment. You can set it also based on home types, single family homes, townhouses, condos. You can also set it based on mortgage amount. So if you have a client who wants to keep their mortgage payment to X and they don't want to exceed a certain number, you can filter assumable homes based on that. So let's just click on one of these properties. Uh, let's just go to the one here. Uh, I just kind of randomly, randomly chose a home here. And when you click on the individual property, 
Uh, maybe this is not the best one, but this home was purchased in April of 2022. Remember I said every single home on, on Assumeless has an interest rate of less than 5%. This is one of the higher ones. So, um, and that's relative to the date it was purchased. Um, the, um, uh, you know, the details here are, we know the down payment because we know what the loan balance is. So Assumeless actually provides you with the loan balance. And this is usually accurate to within about 2% of the actual loan balance. Of course, the actual loan balance is only known by the seller and the lender. So that's not public information, but we have a really good uh, algorithm that calculates and backs into that. And the same goes with the interest rate. Although if the interest rate is advertised in the property description itself, we will factor that in. It will automatically pick that up and display the actual interest rate. And we also provide the mortgage payment. So again, if you're looking for a specific mortgage payment, um, we can provide that. What's really cool is you can share this with a client. So you can create a customized link. Let's just say you as an agent are searching for properties for a client and you found one that you think the client might be interested in. You can share that link. And I'm just going to show you what that shared link looks like. It's branded to you, the agent. With your name, I'm logged into Bethany's account right here. And uh, just to show you an example, it shows your team name, your, your agent name, your name, your photo, your contact information. So wh whoever you share this with, this property is now branded back to you and can be used. And that link can also be posted in social media, in, in uh, Facebook, for example, to generate leads and do lead, lead generation off of it as well. So uh, anybody who clicks this contact agent button is now proceeded with uh, this form, just like in realtor.com or Zillow or these other lead generation forms. And you can use a Zoom list as a lead generation platform to market really low interest rates, maybe a specific neighborhood that you're catering, um, all of that can be done within the Assumeless platform. Last thing, and then I'll, I'll end, is off-market searches. So if you're looking for specific properties or a specific neighborhood, and uh, there's nothing for sale in that neighborhood, you can actually search for every off-market home with an Assumable mortgage to include interest rate, down payment, and even you know, you know, the estimated uh, you know, the mor mortgage payment and estimated down payment. So I just did a quick search in Colorado Springs. Let's just say we want to find a home with less than $50,000 down. We want to only search single family homes. And let's just say we only want to look at the south side of town here near Fort Carlson. So you can do a really specific customized search and then you can pull up properties that match that criteria. Let's just kind of randomly, I don't know, let's just open one of these up here. And we can pull up the old if it's available from the MLS. So in this case, it looks like um, Pikes Peak uh, uh, MLS does provide us with some of the photos from the last time it sold. So last sold price is 516. Well, how do we know the down payment, Mike, if it's not listed for sale? Well, we actually use a, uh, in this case, we're using Zillow for a Z, to pull up a Z estimate, which is, you know, a valuation tool, automated valuation tool. And it says the home, you know, current market valuation is somewhere around 522. We know the less estimated loan balance, so we can run down payment filters off of, uh, or a down payment calculation off of the loan balance and the current market value, even for off-market properties. The really, really cool feature is if you've got a buyer interested in a specific home that happens to be off-market, we provide you with a skip tracing tool where it provides you not only with the home owner's name, names, but you can click on a button and you can run a real-time skip trace tool and you can populate, it'll populate with their phone numbers and email addresses so you can contact them, again, on behalf of that client that you're working with to see if that particular home buyer is interested in entertaining an offer to assume, in this case, it looks to be a VA loan uh, with a 2.82% you know, interest rate. So all of that is available. Uh, again, we are the only platform that does provide B2B services to help agents grow and support their clients. Uh, grow their business, support their clients. And with that, I'll pause and wait for any questions. I, uh, I'll i jump in here, not necessarily a question, a comment. I really love the um, off-market piece here, right? I think as agents, the best opportunity, number one opportunity in this marketplace is becoming a listing agent in these. Because at the end of the day, it just gives you one more tool to sell. Right. You don't know for sure if you're going to sell this home to somebody who wants to do an assumption. But if you've got a listing, that cash buyer that comes along or that new loan buyer comes along, that's that's a closing for you. Right. This just gives you that extra piece. And so having the ability to pull these, if you if you want to use it for marketing or or going out to door knock on homes or, you know, 
creating um, just a list of potentials. I think this is a game changer and that's what I really love about your, your platform. So. Greg, um, I saw there's an agent that had their question up. In fact, it's Jennifer Dorn. I know Jennifer because I actually did an assumption with her. Uh, we just closed on that last month. She was the listing agent. I re represented the buyers and it was for a non-veteran buyer. So with the sellers in this case left their entitlement. Yes, thank you so much. In fact, you also invited me to this and I am very appreciative. You've been my go-to guy. Thank you. Um, my question, and you mentioned to me about um, setting up these searches. So that was one of the other pieces that I was most interested in learning about a, a Zoom list. My question is, if I set up a, or tailor a specific search for if I'm marketing and I want to do it for a say specific or a particular area, can I filter that like you showed with Bethany whoever um, I share that link with will get updates. Like if, you know, we set an auto search up on the MLS yep. and they'll just get in updates. Does this do the same thing? Yep. I'm going to show you real quickly. So uh, these are saved searches in here that uh, Bethany had used. There are some tests in here. So I'm going to just mock up a search. Let's just say Alexandria, Virginia. You want to search for all active and coming soon. Single family and townhomes. We want to eliminate condos. We want a $200,000 uh, minimum uh, down payment. And um, and what we do is we do a safe search. We're going to call this, uh, let's say the client's name is Jen Dorn. And we're going to set up a alert frequency. We're going to do, you can either set up alerts instant, where as soon as the property hits the market that matches this criteria, they'll immediately receive that. You can set up or once a day or weekly. So in this case, we'll set up instant. Then you're presented with these two toggles. One, you want to be updated on status changes. So yes, of course, if the home goes from off market to active or coming soon to active or active or, or under contract back to active, as well as any price changes. So if there's a price reduction, you'll receive an email notification. If I hit save right now, um, only I, the agent, would receive that, uh, uh, receive those updates. However, let's just say, um, you know, uh, the client's name is Joe Smith. I can do Joe Smith, you know, Joe Smith at gmail.com. And now the client, both I and the client are also going to receive those automated emails. So whenever a property that matches that criteria that we just set up hits the market, that client will receive those branded emails. Again, linked, uh, the, all those brands or branded uh, links are all back to you. It's going to be a really nice formatted email. If I had more time, I'd pull up an example of what it looks like. But as soon as I click on that, it shows your contact information as the agent that client will receive those updates automatically, no further action needed by you. And whenever, whenever any property that matches that criteria hits the market, they will receive that email automatic and you can always go back in and update the search criteria if you like. That's awesome. Thank you so much. You know what? It, that worked really well. If anybody wants to raise a hand for Mike, it pops up on my screen so we can unmute you. Um, is there anything specific in the chat, Amy, that you've seen? I did post in the uh, chat if anybody was interested in participating in that Lab Coat Agent webinar, uh, which does start at 1 p.m. Eastern in about 45 minutes. Um, there was a link to register to, uh, to, to participate in that. Okay. Uh, um, why don't I we take you off share then? And, yep, we'll, and just, we'll, we'll just go into I'll, general questions. So. Yep. Absolutely. All right. I'll okay. put mine back Claire, up. Excuse me. Bless you. Claire, there was a question um, that I tagged you in. If you could go ahead and answer that one. Do you see it? Yes. The question was, how would a VA uh, loan property tax exempt purchased by a non-VA loan holder affect both the new purchaser that does not qualify for the tax exemption and the veteran who would like to transfer the property tax exemption to another property. I don't think in El Paso County they would allow that because they would require the new purchaser to show that they were exempt also. Correct. And I think that would be the same here, but I am not... Um an attorney are working on the back end. And I'm not sure if anybody on our team that's on Joey and I'm, I didn't see Erica, who is an attorney, if they have a better answer for that. And if not, then I will respond back to okay. Jess separately and let her know. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, I think the rest of the questions on, on the Virginia side, the VA loans that I have personally worked with, with our processor, if the veteran selling the property gets a discount or is exempt from taxes and the new veteran or person assuming cannot assume their disability discount or exemption, they would have to prove and go through the process that the seller initially went through in order to gain that benefit. So okay. if they don't have the qualifying disability for the tax exemption, that tax exemption will most likely go away and not be transferred to the new buyer. Correct. It goes away. Um, and, and while we're talking about. Go ahead. It was something different. So go ahead and finish with the tax exemption. I was just saying that it goes away unless they too can prove. Um, however, it is not done at the table. It is something that is done on the back end after they've purchased the property and they go through the respective county's treasurer's office to then afford them that exemption through their process. That, that is correct. I've done this many and times. Yeah, the, the tax exemption process is done exclusively with the county, has nothing to do with the lender, so it's not part of the assumption process at all. Um, so anything to do with county taxes or exemptions with county uh, uh, property taxes is all done exclusively with the county itself and not part of, is really not uh, part of the assumption process and doesn't involve the lender. Other, other than, of course, the, the disclosure, and disclosure one other has, thing to, I wanted... has to update. Right. And one other thing that I wanted to bring up that we'll probably start teaching about a little bit more because it's more of a hot topic now than it was when we started this, uh, solar leases. Um, we have one right now where the solar company had said that they would allow the buyer to assume the solar lease as well. 60 days in, they came back and said, oh, no, we don't allow solar, solar leases. So Keep in mind, I don't know if solar is a big thing where you guys are. Um, it's kind of big here and a big pain in the butt. Um, but make sure that it, it, the best way to have that handled is to just have that solar paid off at closing. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm browsing the, the chat here. Um... There was a question about order of sending the contract to Assumption Solutions before ratification, before sending to universal title. Um, I will just say, um, run your contract process as, as normal, right? Like get it to the title company, get it to us at the same time. We don't interfere in that process. Your contract's going to work very similar, except you do not need an appraisal. I don't know if I said that er earlier in your contract. Appraisal sticks with that loan that you're assuming. Um, when you get it to us, we're, we're very much focused on the vertical of getting the assumption done. You're going to do your inspections. You're going to do your title related stuff. Um, anything else that's required in your state, you're going to do as normal. Um, but the earlier we get involved, the better, because um, obviously we're, our goal is to get your timing, um, your timeline as short as we can. So, um, And then Amy Buchanan has a, a very good question. Um, so, the question is, have you experienced any issues when a seller has another veteran assume their loan while buying a new assumption home as their primary residence? So I think, Amy, what you're asking is you've got two assumptions essentially going at the same time. You are going to have extended time periods on that one because the seller's entitlement will not be released for a period of time after closing. And this will... This comes into being an issue if that seller needs their full entitlement to go into the next purchase. This is an issue not only with if they were going into another assumption as the buyer or just going into a new loan as the buyer. 
keep in mind that that entitlement can take up to 75 days and that's the guideline. So I don't have a way to track how long that entitlement restoration is actually taking, but it, it, an assumption isn't probably the best um, if that seller needs full entitlement to go and purchase their next home. Um, so if they if they can get by with the new loan with partial entitlement, then you don't have an issue. If they need that full entitlement or more than what they have available, um, then that seller needs to be aware that there will be delays in their new purchase. Hey, uh, everybody, I think we're getting a little long on time here. So we should uh, we should probably go ahead and wrap this up. Um, I thank everybody for questions. You are welcome to reach out to us directly. A little laugh at the end here, you know, real estate, it's a tough market and I love real estate agents. We are the most creative uh, people. We will always find a way, no matter what is going on in the world, it could be on fire. It could be burning down and we're out there shouting, anyone want to buy a house? We're in the same boat with you. Our company is agent-based. Uh, Assume list is agent-based. Reach out to us. Uh, we want to thank you for uh, joining us, Universal Title for hosting us. Uh, we, we, we're very appreciative of everybody we work with and everybody we partner with. So um, we are going to, this is recorded. We do upload this to our website uh, at assumptionsolutions.com here. Uh, it's all over our going to be all over our website. Uh, Universal Title will have access to this as well, so you can review it. Um, Mike at Assume List, I know, is always open for questions. He's a great resource. Um, we're here to help you succeed. And uh, thanks for joining us today. So I'm going to go ahead and shut it down.